Good morning and happy <laughs> Monday morning to all my brothers and sisters across the North American Division territory. And we are delighted to have you join us today for this first pastor evangelist boot camp. And I love the name pastor evangelist because it's not saying pastor and evangelist. It's saying pastor evangelist is that the pastor is an evangelist. God has called us to preach the word, to share his word, and to invite others to come along with us. We are so excited to have so many of you here, and we know that you are here because you have sensed the times in which we're living, and the time is very, very short, and God is pouring out his spirit even now so that many men and women, boys and girls, can accept the invitation that God so freely and graciously offers uh, through you and through me. I would like to thank our ministerial team for the work that they have done in preparation for this, Elder Ivan Williams, Elder Cortez Jr., Elder Gimmel, uh, Elder Knott, and Sister Bryant. Uh, and the entire team, we thank you all so much for putting this together, and we know God is going to richly, richly bless us as we've come together for this time and for this moment. I am excited about where we are in Earth's history. I'm excited about what I see happening in our society because I believe with everything that's in me that God is setting the stage for the final movements of his church in Earth's history, for the role that we have talked about and preached about and, and prayed about is about to be fulfilled before our very eyes. We see it happening in so many different ways. And so I want to spend just a moment to talk to you about a call to discipleship, that what God is doing at this moment in this time, I believe what God is doing for us, for his church and for his people. But before we do, just bow with me very quickly for prayer. Father, we just thank you for gathering all your children, your sons and your daughters together via uh, this virtual means. And we ask that you might go through the airways and through this Zoom platform and Facebook and wherever a person may be listening, may your spirit move us today in a special way and that we might hear your voice and again say yes to the clarion call to discipleship. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, it, it's amazing that Jesus started his public ministry with a call to the disciples. And it's, it's really interesting to me that when Jesus started his public ministry, he did not start it in a big cathedral, in a big auditorium with thousands of people. He started the call one by one. In fact, when he ended his public ministry. He ended his public ministry with the same call that he started it with. He started with a call to his disciples and he called them one by one, James and John and Peter and Andrew and Bartholomew and Nan, and he called them one by one. But he ends his call to all of us in Matthew 28, 19 and 20. And you know the text, go ye therefore and make disciples. Jesus at the end of his public ministry is calling the disciples that he had already called to go and do what he had already done, the example he had given, go and make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And then he promises, lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the age. And then he said to his disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the labors are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. And so we, we see Jesus admonishing those that he called to call others to join them in proclaiming the good news of the gospel of Christ. And he said, listen, we often talk about people don't want to hear and people don't want to won't respond. That's not what Jesus said. Jesus said the harvest is plentiful. In other words, he said there are a lot of folks out there who are waiting 
for someone else to knock on their door here. They're waiting for someone to make the call. He said, the problem is not the harvest. He said, the problem is the laborers are few. And so he admonishes his disciples. He admonishes those that he called. He said, listen, when you're in a situation where you have the, a greater harvest and you have labors, he said, this is what you should do. Pray ye that the Lord of the harvest, that the Lord of the harvest, it's not our harvest. It's not the church's harvest. It's not the pastor's harvest. It's not the evangelist's harvest. It says the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. So God says we are to call to make disciples and we are to pray that God will send forth more laborers into the harvest. And so as we look at this next quinquennial period, we have adopted the thing, we have voted the thing together in mission that we can't do it by ourselves. We need others to go along with us together in mission. I will go, but I need someone else to go along with me. And God is calling his people, pastors and evangelists, members and laypersons, men and women. He is calling people today to be a part of the laboring force of Jesus Christ. And so we have adopted the thing to gather in mission and we are focusing on three things uh, strategically to how can we better proclaim and present the love of God in this society today. So we can do it better through media. We can multiply our efforts, whether that's multiplying the ministry of Christ, multiplying, reaching out, multiplying, helping in our community, multiply our church planning, multiply our discipleship, multiply our revitalization efforts, multiply and then mentor, develop others to go along with us. Then uh, this, this theme is designed to place a strategic focus on working together across all organizations within the territory of the North American Division uh, with the idea that we can make a tremendous impact if we can leverage our strengths. If we can work together, we can make a greater impact together than we can alone. And so we decided to focus on these three things, media, multiply, and mentorship. Media, we will use every means necessary, every platform necessary, every tool, every mechanism, every vehicle and media. We want to use it for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we want to multiply our efforts there. We want to multiply our efforts with growing the ministry of Jesus throughout our organization, throughout our church. And in mentorship, we want to collaborate to help bring others along with us, our lay persons and our young people people and everyone that we bring them along with us. And we want to network to bring in 10,000 digital disciples so that we can hit the internet by storm and in a way that is a collective manner so that we can have a greater impact for good. We want to use our university students and others. We want to multiply every aspect of the church. We want to pray more. We want to build relationships in a greater way. We want to educate in a greater way and helping in the healing ministry of Christ and proclaiming and revitalizing. We want to do that in the name of Christ. And so our mission is to reach the North America with the distinctive Christ-centered Seventh-day Adventist message of hope and wholeness. And we build our vision on that and we take our goals from that and we develop strategies around that and initiatives. And then the results is doing what Christ has called us to do, going into all the world. Uh, Ellen White tells us Christ's methods alone will give true success in reaching the people. The Savior mingled with men as one who desired their good. He showed sympathy for them. He ministered to their needs and he won their confidence and he bade them follow me. This is the marching orders of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in 2021. Go back and do what Jesus did. And if we do what Jesus did, if we do what Jesus did, 
we will have true success. And we think about what did he do? He mingled with men and women. He showed sympathy for them. He ministered to their needs. He won their confidence. And then he bade them follow me. A lot of times we want to go and ask people to follow us, and we haven't shown sympathy. We have not ministered to their needs. We have not won their confidence. But if we follow the blueprint of Christ, we will reach men and women for the Savior in today's crazy and strange environment, this method still works. And notice it's not plural, it's singular. It's not a program, it's a process. It's timeless and it's flexible. The method of Christ is not, it's a singular method. It's his method, not his methods. It's his method is reaching people where they are and so here's, here's what I was thinking. I just did a little math and multiply. If we use the methods of Christ and if we invited just one person, there, there are 6,000 churches across the North American division. Let's say we have one pastor and an elder represent each church. If we just did one, just made one disciple in year one, then we're going to add two disciples. And in year two, those two will add two more. In year three, those four add four more. And we keep on. And that church will have been impacted in five years, just starting with the impact of one individual because they will grow the ministry of Christ. But then what if all of us did it? What if 6,000 people, 6,000 of us, one per church, would just win one soul, make one disciple for Christ. See, because one thing about a disciple and baptizing person and membership is a disciple makes other disciples. So what if we just said we, we just started from scratch, that we're going to start and we're just going to do one disciple. Year one, six disciples, 6,000 disciples will make 6,000 more. And year two, you're going to have 12,000 will make 12,000 more. And you keep going in year five, you would have impacted the church. You would have impacted the kingdom. You would have impacted the community for Christ just one on one, starting as Jesus did. Jesus started one on one, and he ended up with twelve. And then he ended up with twenty. And then he ended up with uh, he ended up with twelve. He ended up with seventy. And then he went from seventy to one hundred and twenty, and into three hundred, and then the, the five hundred. And then the next number we know was three thousand. We don't have numbers after that, but it would have showed the impact of winning one. And my my appeal to you today is that we're, to, we're stronger together than we are apart. That God has called us. It doesn't matter what your gift is, but God has given each of us a gift to use for the master. And when we use that gift for the master, he said, we will draw men and women to Christ. May God bless you. May God bless us during this pastor evangelist boot camp. We'll hear some exciting ideas. But if we make ourselves a committee of one, we can do what Jesus did, which starting with one, he turned the world upside down just with one. God has called us to do the same. God bless you.